So first you want to create your folders. Make sure all of your folders are set up. In your film folder, you have your Learn Premiere Pro short film. All of your footage that you downloaded from Canva is in your footage folder. Next, we want to create our Premiere Pro file. So go ahead, open Premiere Pro. Click New Project. And over here, you can name it Learn Premiere. And over here where it says location, you can go ahead and click choose location. I'm going to go ahead and save it in the Learn Premiere Pro short film. Go ahead and click select and then hit create. So this is Premiere Pro. Over here, you're going to see a library. Down here, you can see new bin. Bins are the same thing as folders. Premiere Pro sources files. Even when you import footage, it's still sourcing it. It doesn't actually bring it into Premiere Pro, which means if you decide to move your footage later or rename it, it's going to confuse the software and Premiere Pro won't know where to find your footage. So since we already have our folder selected, footage, audio, graphics, we wanna go ahead and select those three folders. You can just hold down Shift on your Mac and select all three folders and then just cl click and drag them into here. Down here you can see list view or the swatch view. I prefer list view. If you ever need to create a new bin, you can always click new bin and it will just create a new bin like that. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it because I don't need it. So footage folders right here. I'm just gonna click this, open the footage folder so I can see thumbnails of all of the footage I imported. When you're ready to start your sequence, you can just click and drag one of the pieces into your timeline. Next, if you put your footage in list view, you're going to see that it created a sequence. I want to go back to the project, put it in list view, and I want to create a new bin. I'm going to call this new bin zero underscore sequence. And this is where you want to save all of your sequences. A sequence basically holds your film in it. That's like your timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and click this sequence, drag it into my sequence folder. And then I'm going to take my sequence folder and drag it outside of our footage folder. Let's see, did that work? Yes. I'm going to close my footage folder. So there you go. This is my sequence. I'm going to go ahead and click on it and rename it. Uh, short film underscore R and D for round one. Then you can see it saved it here. If you ever need to duplicate your sequence, I always duplicate it before I make any serious edits. Also, before I move on to sound design, and then again before I move in on to color, you can just right click, duplicate, and then notice it doesn't automatically open it. Also, rename it round two. So to open it, you can double click on the icon and there you go, it opens it. Over here is your workspaces. Right now we are in all panels. You can edit through all, use using all panels. If you need to do sound design, you want to go to audio. And if you click on it, you can do all kinds of effects like music and stuff like that. If you're using dialogue, you can reduce noise to so get rid of hissing all kinds of stuff here. Whenever you're ready to color, you can go to workspace color. If you're, if you're getting like a weird thing like this, you can just drag these. Um, if you're getting like a very weird window, you can always go to window workspace and then reset to save layouts. And there you go. So you can come in here and like color it however you want. If you want it a sunset scene, totally up to you. I'm going to go back to all panels, but when you're ready for title card, you can go to captions and graphics, and then you can see, you can come in here and type a title card.
And when you're ready to do end credits, you can just type in a whole bunch of stuff, directed, edited, etc. And you can click back on this graphic or on this text. And over here, you're going to see roll. And that when you scroll through it, that's how you get rolling credits. But if you don't want to do rolling credits, this is also how you create a title card. You can come over here and also change your font to whatever you want. Center it. Change the size. And then let's say I want to animate my title so it comes in. So here we go. I'm going to click over here. Make sure you have your text layer selected. I'm going to come over here, effects control, and you can see position and scale. So let's say this is where I want my like, text to end. Like, like by the time we get over here, this is where I want my text. So I'm going to come here in my timeline, click position and scale, and then I'm going to go back to the start of it. And you can always click the arrows on your keyboard. So there's my first frame. And in my first frame, I'm going to go ahead, oops, make sure you have your title card selected. I'm going to go ahead, do I wanna make this smaller? Yeah, how about we start it right there? So zero, position is fine. So then when I hit play, you can just hit your space bar or this play arrow, it slides. And then I'm going to want it to maybe, maybe I'll make it scale really big at this point. Well, actually, I'm go, first I'm going to add keyframes here. So let's add keyframes. And then when we move on a little bit, I'm going to scale it even bigger. And now I'm going to move my position. Here it is. I'm going to see if we can move it. There we go. Even more. Kind of want it to blow up bigger, larger than life. So here I'm going to position it and then let's scale it even larger. I'm going to scale it so it goes to white. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this title smaller. Right click, apply default transition, which is going to be a gradual fade. So let's go to the beginning, play. So it looks like it shifted it from my corner. I originally had it here and it looked like it shifted. So I could come in here, fix it. But I kind of like how it turned out. All right, so the tools, let's go to window workspaces, all panels. And the, this is our toolbar right here. The biggest tool you're going to be using is the razor tool. The razor tool is what you use to cut footage. Right now you can see I had the sync, the link sections unselected. What that does is when you have, it links your footage and audio. So when you come in here and you cut it, it's going to cut both. If you unlink it, which sometimes you do because you want to either extend the film or the audio, this is what you do. If you unlink it, you can edit each separately. So let's say I want to cut it there. Next piece of footage. Let's see. Next piece of footage. I'm going to use this. If you double click on it, you can see it on here. You can play it and decide which part you want. If you click I on your Mac, I is for in, 
I is where you want the video to start, O is where you want your clip to end. And then you can just come in here and click this button right here, which is insert. It's going to insert or overwrite. It's going to insert your video and audio. Notice this clip doesn't have any audio. So instead of clicking insert, which is this, notice there's no audio. What I'm going to do instead is just take my video here and drag it in because I'm going to be sound designing this anyway. So there we go. Now we have our, ooh, that cut is a little bit awkward. The secret to hiding a cut is to cut on movement. So right now, this video doesn't really have any movement. Well, it does, but it's horizontal. This, on the other hand, is kind of zooming in. So what could help this piece of audio right here is to actually zoom it in a little. So I'm going to select it here, effects, position and scale. And then by the end of it, let's click to the end of it on our keyboard using the arrows. I'm going to scale it maybe 150. Let's see how that looks. That helps a lot. It helps a lot. It's still a little bit of a rough transition, but that helps a lot. Also, you can stagger footage so it's not all on the same timeline. And if you need to create a new video track, all you do is just click a piece of video up. There you go. If you click it up, it adds a new track. Same thing with audio. If you need to add a new audio track, just click it all the way down to the bottom and it will automatically add a new audio track. When you're ready for sound design, there's this little area right here beside the microphone. This gray area, you can double click and that makes the audio track bigger and you can mess with the sound volume here. All right, so when you're ready for your next clip, again, click I for in, O for out. If you wanna extend this, I feel like this one's maybe a little bit slow compared to our first one. So what might help if you right click? Let's see, we're going to change the speed of it. So speed duration, let's make this 150. So let's watch that now. That helps a lot. That transition was almost flawless. There we go. So that's a quick editing tutorial. There's also this tool right here. You can come in here and extend footage, make it shorter, make it longer. Slip tool. If you look what it does, it kind of like shuffles it. Okay, this is your select tool. This one right here is great. If you have a bunch of video clips that you need to move at once, you can just click somewhere and it selects everything behind it. If you need to select, instead of taking it and dragging and selecting everything, just click this tool, it selects everything behind it. It's very handy. And if you have your magnet turned on, it's called Snap and Timeline, you'll see that it snaps in place ready for audio you can come back here to your project list view and then you can come here to your audio folder right click and you can import and then come to your audio folder all of your audio that you save you want to put in your audio folder and then you're basically going to import it this way by selecting everything i don't have any audio in there yet but that's how you do it and then when you're ready to export your file, just come over here to your export tab, name your project over here is location. Make sure you set your location for your exports folder. Hit save over here. 1080p is good enough. And then make sure you have the entire source selected scale to fit and then just hit export. And there you go. In a few minutes, it will export your file. 
watch your file before you submit it because sometimes it doesn't export correctly or there's glitches.